Bissola, where are you off to? You see, I'm tired of this country, okay? I'm leaving. I can't take this anymore. I'm moving abroad, okay? I can't continue to deal with this. I'm moving. So, what are some of the things you need to know before you decide to move abroad? Hey guys, you're welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new to this channel, thank you so much for joining. Please consider subscribing down below and be sure to turn the post notification bell on so you can get notified each time I post a new video. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much. You know the vibe, Just give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to share with your friends and leave a comment down below. So in today's video, I'm so excited about this content because we are talking about something very, very interesting and it's not very, very frequently addressed. So, what are some of the things you need to know before you decide to move abroad? By abroad, I don't just mean traveling to Canada. I mean traveling to other top countries out there in the world. You're going to the United States, you're going to the United Kingdom, you're going to Australia, any country outside there that is not your home country. What are those important things you need to know before you decide to migrate? Honestly, abroad is not for everybody right as much as i try to encourage people to seek better opportunities abroad i always let them know as well that it's not for everybody and it's not mandatory you need to know some very important things before you choose to travel what are the very important things for you to note before you decide to move abroad what concerns me most about this subject is because it's not really really addressed by people most people try to avoid talking about these things but i would let you know without further ado let's get started so in no particular order, I would be listing this point here. The first thing is, it's hard to get rich here. So if you are saying you want to move abroad, you need to know that it's not a get rich country. If you're like, I feel like I, I don't know how to address this, but if you are coming from a country like Nigeria, where, where you can evade lots of taxes, that's where you can easily make money honestly there are like really no governmental policies or rules in place that will restrain you from making a lot of money but here the more you earn the more taxes you pay so that's one very important thing you need to know are you traveling because you want to get rich then that's the wrongest thing to do because it's very hard to get rich here the second thing here is it's very hard for you to save i'm not saying people are not rich i'm not saying people are not saving here but the thing is it's very hard to save because the system is built in such a way that it's a credit driven economy and you tend to spend a lot of money every month to take care of yourself and comparing your spendings to your income they are going to be very close like how you are spending almost as much as you are earning so it's very hard to save there are things you want to use money for and you are earning so little so it's very hard to save as well people don't just buy houses outrightly where i come from people can buy a land and build the house all by themselves without even taking a loan or getting a finance or anything but here most people or let me say like 90 percent of the population here they don't buy houses outrightly they mortgage it and they pay almost for the rest of their life that's why i don't get like you work so hard to pay your mortgage for the rest of your life you pay your mortgage for like 25 30 years and i'm still yet to come to terms with that craziness so you want to buy a house it's something that would cost you so much that you would have to pay forever so i mean if you had 25 years plus my age right now i would be almost 50 years 50 years of age is like the rest of my life so i don't know it's almost impossible to buy a house that's another thing you need to know the fourth thing for you to know is if you choose or you have decided that yes i want to migrate i want to move to a better country be sure not to migrate for wealth you can choose to migrate for better opportunity you can choose to migrate for good prospects you can choose because you want better health care good life for your kids and everything but not because you're trying to gain or attain wealth it's it's something that is hard okay Number five on my list that you need to know before you decide to move abroad is bills. 
bills 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 that's what you keep hearing and it's true bills here are paid on monthly basis your house rent is paid on monthly basis your car insurance is paid on monthly basis your phone bill where i come from if you don't make calls or you don't recharge your phone it's up to you but here if you don't pay your phone bills your line will be disconnected that means you can't make calls you can't get job interviews if you have like phone interviews you can't people can't reach out to you by phone call so you will have to pay regardless of whether you make that call or not you have to pay your phone bills your car insurance as well it's either you want it or not it's mandatory you have to insure your car utilities as well your electricity your water bill everything goes on monthly basis internet is on monthly basis in countries where they have to pay for health insurance i feel bad for them they have to pay monthly as well in canada the government take care of our health insurance except you are not a permanent resident or a citizen then you have to pay for your own private health care so health insurance as well is extra money so on monthly basis by the time you sum up all your bills it's a lot of money so bills come in on monthly basis and this brings me up to the next point salaries salaries and wages are usually paid bi-weekly most times some companies pay bi-weekly some companies pay weekly some companies pay monthly some companies pay twice a month as well it all depends on the company but most companies like i mean lots of companies it's almost impossible like even if you are on salary basis or you're on wages hourly rates they try as much as possible to pay you twice a month at least because your expenses comes in back to back to back so they don't and it's a credit driven economy they don't want you to like continue to work until the end of the month before they pay you so they pay you bi-weekly so that you can take care of your expenses because one income comes in it goes for rent the other one comes in you pay your other utilities you pay your other bills so they want to ensure that you're staying on top of your game so they try to pay you every other week or at least twice a month another very important thing about moving abroad you need to know is people have to work multiple jobs it's not strange like working working multiple jobs is not it's not strange it's not unusual it's a norm quite a number of people have two jobs or more than two jobs and this is because they are trying to earn more money so that they can meet up with their expenses and where you are coming from you might just be very very fine with having just your normal salary job and your money comes at the end of the month and everything is all good but here if you are earning even if you are earning like something very sustainable you might still want to consider getting like extra jobs so that you can make more money of course there are opportunities i'm not going to deny that there are lots of people that go into like um delivery services uber eats and all those kind of services that allows them to earn extra money after their normal full-time jobs of course those opportunities abound some people even work in like restaurants some people work in like um customer service work from home jobs and all that so that they can earn extra money but it's not unusual to see people have multiple jobs and the sole aim is so that they can earn more money to take care of their expenses another very important thing you need to know about living abroad is taxes so a good percentage of your income goes into taxes um, and the tax system works this way the more money you earn the more taxes you pay yeah they want you to pay more because they are trying to bridge the gap between the rich and the poor so that nobody is excessively rich and another person is excessively suffering so they try to make sure that the people that earn more money pays more taxes and aside from taxes on your income you also pay taxes on your um, purchases so if you buy goods or render services you're going to pay taxes on them and when you purchase a good or a service you have to pay your taxes on them it's not something that you can except you buy like a cash service or you purchase like product on cash some places they will still charge you for the taxes if you pay by cash what pisses me off the most is overtime taxes like i just don't understand the logic behind it so when someone works for extra hours and they're trying to make more money and you tax them more like it's just insane i don't get it so uh something some people don't know here is um, another very important thing for you to know is that if you're saying yeah you're going to work more hours you're going to try to take multiple jobs and everything so when your income gets a certain bracket you pay more taxes and another thing is if you work overtime hours they charge you more taxes so normally you're supposed to work like say some companies is eight hours per day and you now say oh yeah you're feeling good today and you want to work 12 hours for that day or maybe 40 hours a week and you decide to work up to 45 hours or 50 hours so that extra hours that you work you get extra taxes they would not charge you taxes based on the same rate that you work your normal hours you get extra taxes for the extra hours over time hours you get mostly a time and half so they pay you one rate and an extra half but that extra money you're earning you're going to be paying extra taxes on it so it's just crazy that's another very important thing for you to note and aside from that 
another thing for you to know about living abroad is tax filing so here you have to file your taxes annually so in 2020 you will file your taxes for 2019 for 2020 you are going to file your 2020 taxes in 2021 and this is just a way for them to collate the entire income you make for the year and um see which tax and see which income bracket you fall under if you qualify for a refund they'll give you a refund if you don't they are going to pay extra taxes so in situations where you are working as an independent contractor for instance you wouldn't be charged your taxes until the end of the year when you file so when you file your taxes you'll be the one owing the government so you pay your taxes and you are not exempted from filing your taxes provided you are up to the age of i think 18 or 19 in canada you have to make sure that you file your taxes different countries have as different age range but filing taxes is something that is mandatory for your record keeping it's mandatory for um like your credibility is is mandatory for you as a resident in that country so it's very important for you to note that tax filing is also something that you would do if you are coming from a country where you've never had to file your taxes even as a business or an individual or a regular person you're working you're doing your nine to five job they are taking taxes from your income you still have to file your taxes at the end of the year so if it's something that you're not used to you need to get yourself ready for that life something that surprised me a lot when i came into this country is tips like tips you know when you purchase something and someone expects you that you should add tips to it tips would be in percentage sometimes they would allow you put in an amount and you could put like 10 percent of what you purchased or five percent or anything and it just surprised me because where i came from if you ask for like tips you're like ah, i beg i beg find me something now people will be like why are you asking for money you did your job right so why are you asking for something but here it's like a norm when you go to a restaurant and they render you the services and everything when they bring the bill to you the um, restaurant attendants would expect that you should know that you should pay tips you should know that you should give them tips like when they put in the amount for the service if it's like $40 they'll give you the um, POS machine to enter the tips before you can like proceed to the next stage to pay it's not mandatory nobody will bring a gun to your head if you choose not to pay but it's something that if you don't pay tips like people look at you like why is this person like this and one of the reasons i realized for these tips is because these people that work in this kind of services in restaurants and bars and all those places they don't hand the reg regular wages that people earn so they have the chance of earning more money and they have the chance of earning less so the thing is it's going to be an agreement between them and their employer so if the rates the, if the income that they earn for that period is not up to the minimum wage of what province or city they are staying in the employer has to up their income for them but if the um if the income is beyond the rate then that's fine for them that's their own luck and um, most of those people that work in such services they earn like three dollar per hour or four dollar per hour and it's really really small compared to other people that earn like fourteen dollar per hour for people that earn like fourteen dollar per hour or sixteen dollar per hour your income is guaranteed like regardless you get sixteen dollar for these people that work in this kind of services their income is dependent on how much tips they earn so if they don't earn tips then the employer has to increase their wages to like the minimum wage for that city but if they do then they have the chance of earning a lot of money than people that actually work 14 dollars per hour jobs so it's just another crazy thing i hope you see what i'm saying it makes a lot of sense why people abroad seems like they are stingy or it comes across as if they are tight-handed because you don't know how much income these guys are earning they might be earning a lot of money by the time you convert it to your own country currency if you convert um us dollars to um ghana cities for instance you see that oh it's a lot of money but you don't know you shouldn't that i always tell people when you ask that how much is 16 dollar per hour you multiply it by oh 40 dollar per week blah, blah 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 i used to tell people that you shouldn't be doing the calculation that way because the more these people earn the more taxes they pay the more expenses they pay their monthly bills and everything goes comes from that income that they earn so you also have to consider that when you're saying these people earn a lot of money to people that live abroad every one dollar matters every one cent matters like nobody's nobody's going to dash you money for free here before i came here like it's so easy for me to say oh i want to spend 15k on lunch or 15,000 naira. i mean on lunch or like lavish money like that but here when i want to order food in like 20 dollar meal i'm like is it really worth it or should i just cook like 
I start asking myself that question and that's just the truth of the matter like when you start earning here it's easy for you to spend at the same time you become cautious about your expenses so you guys cut people abroad some slack cut them some slacks okay um, it's understandable why it seems like they are stingy or they don't want to give you guys money or they have this kind of hand you need to understand that income abroad as well is not as easy as it seems one very last thing I want to mention here is the system is a credit driven economy I think I mentioned that earlier and um, it's very easy to get yourself into debt if you're not careful because you have your credit card and you have opportunities to spend money you can easily get loans and all those things if you are not careful you could get yourself into debts that you'll be paying for life so it's also very very risky as well and you need to have a very strong sense of wealth management or finance management in order not for you in order for you not to get into debt I hope that makes a lot of sense this is not to discourage you of pursuing your dream to move abroad this is not to like tell you not to go ahead because i would encourage like if you ask me right now do you want to go back to your home country the answer is no do i think i want to go back at some point maybe for fun like nigeria has vibes it's fun it's so much fun down there but do you think do i think i want to go back there to leave and like settle the answer is no as hard as it seems that life is here i will still choose this one here and i'm so excited and i'm grateful for the privilege i have to have moved down here so i hope you guys understand what i'm trying to say and i hope you learned a lot i hope you enjoy watching this video as well if you do please don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you're yet to subscribe do so right away subscribe down below and be sure to turn the post notification bell on and i'll see you all in my next video in the meantime stay confident bye, -bye.